Hey guys, Taylor here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a PBX or private branch exchange and all this really is is a, um, is a phone system. It can be for an office, a small business, even a large business. Um, so the way that this particular PBX works is, and you can set these up in a, in a lot of different manners, but uh, kind of a standard way um, that this works is, for example, we're going to have three phones. Um, each phone has an extension, uh, one, two, and three. Now, in this case, each of these phones actually has a 10-digit unique number that, <clears throat> just like a regular phone number, that can be called in the phone will ring. Um, but there's there is a what I'm calling a main company phone number that when you call that number um, you're you're prompted to enter your party's extension and each of these phones is phone is also um, assigned a particular extension this is one two and three so I'll go ahead and show you um, so here I'm calling the, the what I'm calling the main business phone and thanks for calling my company <clears throat> and there's a there's a voice prompt this is this is a machine voice prompt but you can you can upload your own um, so it's just asking me to enter my extension. I'm going to press Hi. 2, and this particular phone should ring because it's the um, it's extension 2. So, hello. So, so that's basically how that works. Um, the other cool thing about this is, since it's a private branch exchange, exchange um, we can pick up, say, for example, one, um, this first extension 1, and just press 2. And it will dial the this phone and that call is entirely hello hey so um, that call is entirely it doesn't travel through the traditional phone line so it's entirely free which is really nice especially for big businesses who might make a lot of calls internally and any of these phones can also dial out um, and a lot of PBX require you to like dial like uh, like five or something before you dial out um, but this doesn't require that you can just you can just dial out hello you can just dial the number and as long as it's not a internal extension which unless you set up a ten digit extension it's not going to be it will dial a um, it'll dial any number it can be a cell phone or whatever um, so that's basically how that works um, as far as the phones they have to be VoIP phones um, and I recommend getting the uh, I, I recommend the Grand Stream, uh, the GXP fourteen hundred. It's called is a great phone. It's really it's, um, it's you can probably find one for under fifty bucks. It's a great deal. The Astra six seven five seven I is a little bit nicer. Uh, costs a little bit more money, uh, but I really I think this Grand Stream's good for most scenarios. The only downside to it is you have to be near a Ethernet cable because you have to go ahead and plug in the cable. Um, if you're not, if you're not going to be near somewhere where you can plug in the Ethernet cable, then you're going to want to get a wireless... Um, what you can do is basically set up a hub and then have a, uh, a mobile phone uh, that you can put anywhere. Um, those phones are a little more expensive. Usually it's going to cost over a hundred bucks. Um, so for these three, for these two phones, I got them real cheap. This is actually, I just upgraded this one. Um, it's a little more expensive, like it was over a hundred bucks. Um, but these two were both, this one was like 30 and this one was around 40 or something. They were really cheap. Um, and so that's the basics of what we're going to be setting up. We're, again, we're using Ring Roost to kind of actually design the, um, the PBX system. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks guys. All right, Taylor here, and today we're setting up a PBX system using RingRoost. So by net, right now, we should have at least one SIP phone. Again, I recommend this GXP 1400. You can get it for around 50 bucks um, on ver just Google it. Um, it'll ship to you in a couple days. Um, so now we need to rip to set up our PBX system using RingRoost and register our phones. So we're going to do that now. Um, so go ahead and go to RingRoost.com. Um, I'm just going to create a test account. Um, um, use email. Enter a password. Uh, make sure you read the terms and conditions. I've read them. Now we'll be taken to our dashboard. So the first thing we actually need to do is get some phone numbers to show you real quick. This is an example of a um, basically a phone system 
um, how, how we build a phone system. But anyways, for now, we're going to go to phone numbers, and I hope this is big enough. Um, so by default, you have one free phone number. I'm going to go ahead and add um, two more phone numbers. And you probably, depending on how many phones you're setting up, you probably want a phone number for each phone, but you don't have to have um, a phone number for each phone. So I've got a 704 number. Um, I'm going to add a, um, a 918 phone number. So now I'll have three phone numbers. Um, if I was really setting up my own system, I would get a system in my own area. Um, but so I'm also going to just label these numbers um, line one, line two, just so I know which one's which and I don't get confused with them, line three. Um, and we're going to need to E911 able them. Um, but I'll show you how to do that at the end. So now back to our dashboard, we have our three phone numbers. Um, instead of using our default board, actually we we will create a, actually we will use our default board. I'll just rename this to um, my PBX. You can, if you want, you can create a, a new board, but you can also just use this. So you can already see the inbound phone we have one inbound phone element set up. Um, so I, I'm just going to pretend like we created a, a new board. Um, sorry, so let me save this. So this is what it would look like if you did create a new board and you're starting from scratch. Um, so the first thing we need to do is drag and drop. Uh, just just a quick overview of this. What, what this is is a um, it's a web-based software uh, design tool. Oh, it's more than a design tool because it's basically being set up in real time. So what we and it's um, the way it works is you basically just drag and drop various elements and bind them together. Um, so the first element we need is an inbound phone element, and what this does is it t basically takes calls from the traditional phone line. So if somebody dials this nine one nine six five nine number. Um, it means, all right, it's going to come into our Ring Roost account, and this control is going to handle it. So we need to tell it uh, where to go. Um, in this case, we want to send it to our VoIP phone. We could also do something like send it to an options menu and say, like, how are you? Um, and it would read a text um, and then bind it. But, but what we want for our PBX is to bind it to a VoIP phone. And I'm going to make this a little bigger in case you're having trouble seeing it. Let's see. Um, and so this is going to be our first extension, extension one. And now we're going to click save. And from here, we need to register our. Um, we need to use these credentials to register our our SIP phone. Um, for this to work properly. So I'll show you how to do All that. right, so we're setting up the Grandstream GXP 1400 and we're gonna register the phone um, with RingRoost. So basically all we need from RingRoost is three different credentials, the SIP host, the SIP username, and the SIP password. Uh, we're gonna put this directly in the phone. You can actually do it directly through the Grandstream interface uh, under config SIP credentials. We're actually going to just get the IP address of the phone, and it, Grandstream has a web interface so we can enter the IP address onto our computer uh, and change the settings. So we're going to do it that way. Um, to get the IP address, just go into config, network IP, it should show the IP address. Um, I would recommend using DHCP protocol um, rather than a static IP. Um, if you don't know what that means, just read the manual. You just got to set it to DHCP. Um, the IP address should probably be something like 10.0.0.3, um, and you can type that right into your browser. Um, so um, the only thing about setting this phone up, it, I mean, it should be really intuitive. You just need to plug in the Ethernet cable and plug it in um, and turn it on. And then from there, we will do this step of registering it on the SIP address. So now we're, gonna go we're to registering the our Grandstream GXP 1400 um, with this VoIP um, with this VoIP phone on RingRoost. Um, so the three things we need is this SIP host, this SIP username, and this password. Um, so um, either 
open up a new tab or jot these down somewhere. Um, so here we're going to type in the IP address of our phone, and you can get this right from your phone. Um, I'm using DHCP, so it's something like 10.0.0.3. Um, the default password for the GXP1400 is simply admin, real secure, but that's the idea. It's not supposed to be initially. Um, so the GXP can actually allows us to register two accounts. We are going to just register the one account basically. Um, so under the account name, we this is what they're looking for, the SIP username. We're going to say SIP username and here we also put the SIP user ID here, authentication ID here. Um, um, I'm not sure what this name is, but we'll just put the the username in there as well. Authentic authentication password is going to be the password, and now everyone knows this password, so I'm going to have to change it. That's all right. Um, and then for the SIP server, we are going to use ringroost.com. Um, use whatever you have in, as the SIP host. It should be it should be the same. So um, and that's all we need. So Account active, yes, and then click save and apply. The nice thing about the GXP1400 is a lot of phones you have to reboot, but I don't think you do on this one. Um, then we'll go to status. It looks like it says it's still not registered, but sometimes it takes uh, just a second to load. You know, maybe it um, might have actually just rebooted. It's done something, but okay. Um, yeah, so now we have registered, and now we can make a call uh, with the phone, and that should be all you need to do. So go ahead and test your phone out, make an outbound call, um, call a friend or something, make sure it works, um, have them call you back. As long as you have this set up um, with your inbound phone, the same as the caller ID, um, they could just you could call somebody and they could call you right back. Um, so it's as simple as that with with another type of phone. It's going to be a, a very similar setup um, It'll basically be you'll have to enter in some sort of SIP server the some sort of SIP username um, And you'll have to save it and maybe restart the phone no matter what type of phone you're on um, So that's all there is to it And after we register our first SIP phone we're going to do the exact same thing with our other two lines. We're going to say line two. Um, bind it to another VoIP phone. Click save. And it looks like I accidentally named two lines line two. So this should be line three. Um, and then we'll go back to our dashboard, view edit. Make sure, okay, so we have one line, one, two, line three. Now here's line three. And again, we're going to connect the VoIP phone. Uh, and make sure you go through the same process of registering each SIP phone. If you only have one phone, then you're only going to have to do it once. But if you have more, you're going to do it three times. And on these phones, make sure you have set up the caller extension two and three, respectively. That way, when we pick up a phone and dial it, or that, that basically gives us the extension 1, 2, and 3. Um, so from here, we have a basic PBX system working. Now, if we want to add, let's say that we want to, to make it so when a person calls in, they can, um, they can hear, a, they hear a voice prompt that says, that prompts them to dial an extension. So now we're gonna add the option, an options menu and we're gonna say, please, dial your party's extension I'll wait to speak to somebody word it better but well, just that'll do for now um, and you, you you don't you can this text to say means that the computer will actually read this back you can also record your own recording which you probably should do um, you can set female or male and how many times it's going to play. Um, so let's what the way the options menu works is if they don't choose anything, um, this is the fall through. So I'm just going to if they don't choose anything, we're going to fall through to line one. 
Um, now let's say they do choose something. Um, we have three extensions, so you need to go to Add Menu Item. And it looks like it's shown up a little bit strange, but we're going to say 1, 2, and 3. So now if they press 1, 2, or 3, we want to direct them to a, a particular extension. I'm going to have to zoom out so I can um, do this right. But so um, if they press 2, we want them to go to this extension. And rather than connecting this to the inbound phone, we actually just want to connect it directly to the VoIP phone. Otherwise, we actually have to traverse the call back through the tradition, the PSTN phone lines. Um, and the same thing with extension 3. And where's our other VoIP phone? There it is. And also with extension 1. So now we are all set up. And... I'm just going to close this, just make it a little more organized, just so it's tidier here. Point one, point two, point three, click. Save call system up top. And now whenever a call comes in, this will be read. If they press one, two, or three, they'll be sent to the appropriate phone. Um, all these VoIP phones can make outbound calls. Um, so the, the last thing I want to show is how to set up a 911 phone number. Um, so we can use, we just don't want to use extension, we just don't want to use this phone number because when they call it if, if uh, as the 911 number, because if, if somebody does call it, they're going to be led into this IVR system, which we don't want. We just want them to get a uh, direct line. So we're going to use this, we're going to use line, oh, I guess that's line... Oh, so this should be extension two, yeah. Oh, I, I, I misnamed these. Line one. So this should be line two. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, that's the caller ID. So this phone, oh, that's the one other thing I, I failed to set properly. So um, this, should we, we should, this should be set to line one on the VoIP phone so that the caller ID is correct. This should be set to line two, and this should be set to line three for the caller ID. Um, now for the E911, um, I'm just gonna save this and make sure we're right. So uh, for the E911, we need to go back into phone numbers. Um, we wanted to enable line two, um, you're going to have to read this and agree to it. It basically lets you know that these E911 services aren't over the traditional phone lines. They're um, a type of VoIP service, basically. Um, so, I thought I clicked enabled. I understand and agree. Um, and then enter in your address. I'm going to use the business. Um, oh wait, sorry. That's. I'm going to use our business address. City, Charlotte, North Carolina, two eight two six. Uh, click verify and set E nine one one address. You should see this message that it's been saved. Um, some if your address doesn't work. Um, it means the E91 service couldn't find your address, so you need to make sure that you have a, um, a E911 um, address. Most, if not most, almost all addresses should work, so um, ensure that you have a, the appropriate address in this area. Then go back to your, um, your PBX system, and you'll see for all these VoIP phones, right now this, they have this little 911X. Um, see that so within your VoIP phone make sure that under set 911 caller ID we have it set to line 2 this way whenever this if emergency word happen you are to pick this phone up and call 911 um, the 911 operator would see this number which means they could call back um, and they would also see the address you have um, so we're going to change all these. We're going to do the same thing here. Set the same 911 extension. If you want, you can enable all three 
phone, all three 911 numbers separately. Um, however, the 911 does, the having a 911 number costs a little extra a month. So I would recommend just using one address, at least for every physical location that you have. Um, then we'll click Save Call System. And after you save it, you should see that this turns green 911 check. Um, and the way to test these out is dial 933. Do not dial 911, but dial 933 rather. Um, and you should hear someone reading back to you um, your address and the phone number, the uh, basically this the E911 caller ID, and you're all you're all um, 911 set up and good to go. Um, so that's the basics of setting up a PBX. If you have any issues, just um, at any time, you can just go to this need help thing. Um, the support at Ring Roost, there's always support staff on um, that can help you out. So um, that's it.